Welcome everyone to today's CSI webinar series. My name is Colin Hammond and I will be your host today. For those of you who are unfamiliar with CSIA, we are a global nonprofit professional association with over 500 member companies in 40 countries. Our mission is to advance the practice of control system integration to benefit our members and their clients. Our vision is to ensure that manufacturing and process industries everywhere have access to low risk, safe, and successful application of automation technology. CSIA membership offers members access to resources needed to attain and exceed business goals. To highlight just a few of our many member benefits, the CSIA Best Practices Manual guides control system integration companies in the setup and running of a solid company. CSIA's business insurance program offers members an excellence insurance program for business owners, subcontractors, and more. The program includes members from all over the world enjoying the peace of mind that comes with CSIA insurance. Clients in all industries are now seeking integrators with a CSIA certification alongside ISO. They recognize CSI's certified integrator's commitment to industry standards and business acumen. As a result, being certified can shorten the sales cycle. CSIA Industrial Automation Exchange is the premier automation guide featuring system integrators and suppliers who provide industrial manufacturing and process automation solutions. For integrators and suppliers, it's a place to market their expertise. Clients will find white papers, case studies, capabilities, contact information, and engage in conversation directly with CSIA members. Please follow CSIA's online events calendars for all upcoming webinars. That includes partner webinars, business webinars, and our Wednesday webinar series. CSIA's partner webinars are opportunities given to CSIA's industry partners, to address hot topics and demonstrate their expertise. You won't wanna miss these opportunities to learn from the comfort of your own office or home. And for more information about CSIA, please visit our website or contact us at info at staff.controlsys.org or 847-686-2245. And at this time, I would like to introduce our presenter, John Marciando. John has been growing sales in the automation and technology space for over 30 years and has worked in automotive, oil and gas, manufacturing, and the IoT space. Having joined Fluid Mesh in 2019, John has been focused on the entertainment and theme park market, as well as factory automation. He currently resides in West, Mich West Michigan with his family. And with that, I would like to turn it over to today's speaker. Welcome, John. Thanks, Colin. I guess that, uh, that just means uh, that I'm old if I've been doing this for over 30 years. So I'm gonna share my screen. Hopefully this works. All right, there you go. How's that look? Awesome. Yeah. So uh, I will uh, get started here. Um, so, uh, if you're not aware, uh, Fluid Mesh is now part of Cisco's IoT business. Uh, we were uh, acquired by Cisco, or it was announced in uh, in April, and we finalized the uh, the transaction in July. So we've only been part of this group for a short time. So uh, we're not sure exactly what the future holds, but we're pretty excited about it. If you're not familiar with Fluid Mesh and uh, where we come from, uh, we were founded by two teams, one at uh, MIT and the other at Polytechnico de Milan um, to uh, basically replace fiber optic links between security cameras. Um, and the business uh, was developed around that and flourished. Um, and as we grew, we developed other applications and other technologies. Um, we are, because we are, and we're founded around um, CCTV and security. We have a lot of installed base there uh, with a lot of municipalities, a lot of public safety entities. Uh, we also participate in wireless infrastructure projects for doing uh, enterprise and wireless backhaul for a number of applications. Um, we have also developed a mobility 
uh, technology uh, that we'll focus on for a lot of this presentation. So you'll learn more about that as we go on. And we also have some industrial automation applications in SCADA, uh, condition monitoring, uh, intelligent traffic, uh, utilities, and smart grids as well. So we cover a wide number of vertical markets um, with a, wide, a, a broad number of our technologies. Uh, we are a Cisco solutions partner uh, and the you know, joke is kind of, uh, they liked us so much that they bought the company. Uh, we're also certified by CATS MindStar uh, group for remote dozing and hauling. And we're also a Rockwell automation partner. So we've been certified and validated by uh, their technical teams for use on their uh, PLC communications networks. So as I mentioned, uh, Fluid Mesh started uh, with uh, replacing fiber optic links between uh, security cameras. Um, so if someone didn't want to trench or spend the time and energy to run a fiber optic link, uh, we make it very, very easy to get the same fiber optic performance without having to do the, the extra labor in uh, trenching and pulling extra fiber optic cable and terminating and, and maybe uh, uh, doing some splicing as well. So uh, this makes it a much, much easier configuration uh, when these are deployed uh, in the field. So you can get up to, depending on the technology you select within our portfolio, uh, you can get up to 500 megabits per second uh, of throughput. So we can actually, uh, develop systems around uh, multiple technologies or multiple architectures, uh, point to point, point to multi-point, mesh, and a mixture of those. Uh, and we can do all of that in the, uh, the same uh, hardware set in many cases. So uh, it reduces uh, the investment that someone has to put in to uh, solve a multitude of applications. Um, so uh, we've got some, some interesting software technology that enables that uh, based on uh, the, uh, the, the device you, uh, you select. Uh, the product portfolio is fairly small. Uh, there's lots of derivatives of each individual product, but uh, the main product line is, is as you see it here, uh, the Ponte, which is a point-to-point -point, uh, link. It's, it's a, uh, that's the only application that product solves. And then all the others are uh, able to be configured in uh, fixed uh, or mobility applications. Um, and they have different performance envelopes uh, for different uh, types of applications. Uh, the majority of what we're going to focus on today is going to be uh, the FM42 and 4500, which are our mobility-centric products. Uh, the special sauce, if you will, that enables this connectivity and, and our performance is uh, our Prodigy 2.0 um, software uh, product. And it's, it's MPLS-based, which is multi-protocol uh, label switching, which was originally developed in the fiber optic industry. And uh, this is the first uh, development of that in wireless. Um, it's got some patented packet inspection algorithms that allow you to assign priorities to specific uh, pieces of information that get transmitted. Um, it's very, very robust for uh, high interference and, 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 and high noise um, installations. Uh, very low latency, very low jitter, um, and it's very, very good at doing fast roaming um, in uh, mobility-centric applications. So we uh, actually shape the uh, Ethernet traffic or, or uh, limit the Ethernet traffic based on the application. So uh, although uh, many of the radios, especially the 4500 that we, uh, I mentioned earlier, is capable of 500 megabits per second, uh, if you don't require that much bandwidth, uh, we can actually sell you a license for a, a much less uh, uh, throughput so that uh, you, can, you can actually limit your, uh, you, your investment. Um, and the great thing is you can upgrade that if you find that your application now has a higher bandwidth need, uh, you, can, you can update to the, to the next level of, of bandwidth for a, a, a limited cost. Uh, and these are not yearly licenses. Once you buy these licenses, uh, they are transferable from radio to radio if uh, there's damage or something happens to, uh, to one of the radios in the field. Uh, FluidMax is the technology that, allow, that allows the radios to actually uh, function in the multiple um, topologies that I mentioned earlier, point-to-point, point-to-multipoint, mesh, uh, all in the same hardware, which is fairly unique. 
uh, and they run either CSMA or TDMA based on the application. Um, so it, it, it's really, really good for uh, applications where uh, you may have to scale uh, your, your number of radios in the future. Um, it, it makes it easier to adapt uh, from a point to point to point to multi point network uh, in the same hardware just by changing the, uh, the configuration of the radio. We also support uh, industrial Ethernet, uh, so we can, we can uh, communicate Profi-Net uh, and uh, Ethernet IP, and we've also done um, Profi-Safe and uh, SIP Safety over wireless for uh, those low latency applications that might require some very, very tight communications uh, uh, response times back from, uh, from PLC to, uh, to PLC in a particular application. Uh, because Prodigy and the MPLS technology is uh, proprietary, uh, we're fairly invisible to other 802.11 devices that you might encounter in the field. So because this is not 802.11, um, uh, we still have to contend with uh, some of the same frequency space, um, which is uh, typically the 4.9 to 5.9 spectrum. Uh, but uh, we do not uh, interfere with uh, existing Wi-Fi communications. Um, there's also a hardware-based AES encryption that can be enabled in the devices if you're concerned about the uh, information over the air, uh, which is what gets encrypted. Uh, there's a FIPS 140-2 certification. Uh, we also have 24-7 monitoring with some of the tools and tool set that uh, we provide along with the radios. So let's talk a little bit about mobility, which is really what makes our solution uh, popular and unique in mobility applications. Um, and when I talk about mobility, it's really about devices that are moving and many of them are moving at high speed. So we have some uh, installations in Europe where we're actually doing bullet train uh, communications between a train and a wayside. So train to ground at uh, 250 uh, uh, miles an hour. Uh, so we're actually able to, to maintain that connectivity as the train uh, goes down the, uh, the track and uh, hops from access point to access point. So the fluidity technology uh, is based around the, uh, the, the Prodigy uh, software um, and it enables the fast roaming technology uh, in wireless that I mentioned earlier. Uh, it enables extremely fast handoff mechanisms um, and can, uh, can, can provide lossless handoffs, uh, very, very fast acquisition of the next access point, uh, especially at that uh, speed I mentioned earlier, 225 miles an hour. Um, and it's, the mobile unit is actually the device that's intelligent <clears throat> in this architecture. So whereas uh, 802.11 and Wi-Fi, the access point control and, and, can, and the wireless controller actually make that decision. Um, in our technology, the mobile device can actually make that, uh, make that decision on which access point to connect to. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in, in a few minutes. Um, and there's also no uh, IP reconfiguration uh, during roaming because of the, uh, the way the MPLS technology works. So you can communicate many things over these, uh, these same low latency, high bandwidth networks. You can communicate uh, things like SIP safety or Profisafe, um, control information from PLC to PLC, Navigation information if you have an AGV, um, audio video. In many cases, we're, uh, we're deployed in theme parks where they're uh, coordinating audio video. Uh, there's also onboard camera streaming that can be uh, maintained and, and established uh, on this uh, same network, uh, as well as just, just points of data. So we can do all of that over the same low latency, high bandwidth network. And, and, the, low, and the latency numbers tend to be less than 10 milliseconds. So they, they tend to be in the two to three milliseconds, depending on what you're trying to do, distances, uh, and uh, the, the signal strength that you can actually encounter with uh, the access point. Um, and so I mentioned earlier, we, we have done a lot of things in the rail industry, um, which is where this mobility technology got its start. Um, so we talk a lot about and have a lot of installed base there, uh, but it's basically uh, maintaining train to ground communications uh, on, the, on the vehicle as it's moving down the track. So if you're browsing uh, with Wi-Fi on the train, uh, in, in many cases in Europe, uh, you'll find that we're actually the uh, communications medium that goes between the train and ground and maintains that Wi-Fi connection. We're not providing the Wi-Fi, but we're actually providing the backhaul to the, to the track side uh, to get it back to the physical network itself. 
We also have a number of applications in ports where we're doing uh, rubber tire gantries, rail mounted gantries and auto straddles where uh, we're moving containers back and forth. Uh, in many cases, those are uh, being tele remote operated by an operator that's somewhere else uh, other than in the vehicle itself. Uh, so we, we have a number of, uh, of, of pieces of technology that enable the, that ability as well as um, deploying that um, same make before break and uh, mobility application that we talked about for, uh, for train to ground. Uh, and chances are, if you've been to a theme park in the US and ridden some of the new rides, you have probably experienced some of our technology without realizing it. Um, we do a lot of uh, onboard PLC control, uh, onboard video surveillance. Uh, I mentioned that audio video synchronization with vehicle movement on things like dark rides or parades. Uh, many times they'll coordinate uh, via wireless technology, the uh, audio and video on a parade. Um, and uh, again, the trackless rides and AGVs, uh, which are typically just large uh, automated vehicles with people in them. So safety uh, and reliability are very, very important. We also have in the material handling space, uh, the same type of applications for uh, large uh, AGVs. And also uh, this technology lends itself very, very well when you have high density, uh, installations of AGVs. So you have a large number of AGVs that are being deployed at one time uh, and are, are roaming through a factory. Uh, this technology makes it very, very easy for someone to set up a network and, and get things running without having to worry too much about uh, interfering with the, uh, the existing Wi-Fi infrastructure that's there or relying on that, which is tends to be very, very low latency and sometimes limited, limited on throughput and bandwidth. So let's talk a little bit about um, some of the technology advantages that, uh, that, that we have in our product line that differentiate us from some of the others that you might find out there. Um, when you compare uh, our product and our technology with uh, things like uh, GPRS or 3G and, and LTE technology, um, those tend to do very, very well in, uh, in higher speed applications, but their throughput is fairly limited, their usable throughput. Um, conversely, if you look at Wi-Fi and WiMAX technology, uh, they do very, very well at, at high bandwidth and high throughput. But uh, when you start to, uh, to travel and uh, try to, to uh, do fast roaming, uh, that's where their solutions tend to, uh, tend to fall apart. Um, so when you combine uh, those two and you, you take a look at um, the, uh, the technology that Fluid Mesh has, um, for doing things like fleet dispatch of vehicles, tele-remote operations, and autonomous vehicles. Uh, we have uh, the best of both worlds with high throughput up to 500 megabits per second. And, uh, and also um, we, can, we can maintain those uh, high speed connectivity applications at 225 miles an hour. So I'm gonna spend a little time on this slide talking about what what makes our technology work and uh, why it's different than some of the other um, technologies that you may be familiar with, like Wi-Fi, for instance. Um, the left side here in the blue boxes are the challenges that you run into when you're doing mobility applications. Um, and these are the bottom three layers of the OSI model. So physical layer would be zero, Mac layer is, is one, and, and or excuse me, network layer it, it, zero, one, two, and three, excuse me. Um, so uh, basically on the, the physical layer, uh, you have things like signal distortions and channel coherence um, that you run into. Um, and how we get around that is we actually use uh, large gar larger guard intervals to, uh, to, to make up for some of the Doppler effect that you may see um, in some of those installations. Um, the, we use two by two MIMO antenna technology that um, allows you to uh, get around some of the signal distortions um, on a uh, line of sight application like we typically recommend, um, you, you find that uh, two by two MIMO is optimal for, for that uh, type of installation. Um, in your home, you might have a Wi-Fi access point that may look like a spider. It has six or eight antennas on it. And it's great when you have to go through walls and, and go to different rooms in a home. But in the applications and the installations that we do, we, we recommend line of sight and uh, two by two MIMO is ideal for those types of applications. Uh, and we also have some uh, high gain directional antennas that we, uh, we use that are specially designed and developed for us 
that allow us to, uh, to maintain and, and get around some of the signal uh, interference and distortions that you might find in a lot of these applications. Uh, if you move up to the Mac layer, <clears throat> some of the, uh, the issues that you run into are, are handoffs between uh, a mobile device and an access point and, and, and acquisition of the actual uh, connectivity between those two. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, the, the mobile device in, in our scenario is actually the intelligent device and actually makes the decision on which access point to connect to. Um, and basically it only takes two packets to actually make a connection instead of waiting for uh, up to a minute in many cases for, <clears throat> pardon me, for a, a Wi-Fi uh, connection uh, uh, and authentication process, that triple handshake, uh, this is much, much faster. Um, we also uh, do a background monitoring of the RSSI from the access points. Um, we actually look at uh, the, the first derivative, which is velocity, um, and that we can actually make a determination uh, on which rate to actually use as we're going from access point to access point. Uh, and the reason that's, that's key is because as the device is moving, that uh, the, the signal strength changes and the rate can actually change. So uh, we have a predictive algor algorithm that actually um, predicts what the rate's gonna be as the device is moving and negotiating with a new access point. Um, and we also have a make before break uh, connectivity um, option on the mobile, but not option, but that, that's how we actually go from access point to access point with a mobile device. So we don't break the connection of the existing access point that we're connected to uh, before we actually make the connection of the next one. Um, and again, those are all negotiated by and, and monitored by the mobile device looking at the, uh, the signal strength and RSSI of the, the access point that it can actually see. Um, so it makes a request to the next access point uh, that it sees uh, that it's, as it's traveling through its path, um, if that signal is, is, uh, is strong enough. And uh, the access point will say, yes or no, you can connect to me. And then if, if it's a yes, they make the connection and, and everything is good. If it's no, the, uh, the mobile device actually takes a look for the, for the second next um, signal strength access point uh, and actually try, attempts to connect with that. So um, it's, a, it's a very, very forgiving uh, system from that perspective. Um, and then as you get up to the network layer, um, the MPLS technology um, doesn't have to reconfigure the network as the mobile device connects uh, and, and disconnects from access point to access point. Um, in a normal network, uh, you have a, a, a broadcast uh, of ARP messages going back and forth as the, the routers and other devices update their ARP table or their MAC address table. Um, in this case, um, because there's only one connection back to the physical network in our topology, um, it's called a mesh end. Um, that is the, the entry point for all the traffic so that the network never really has to con reconfigure itself. It always knows what's connected to what based on the MPLS technology. Um, and so we have some patents around um, how this technology works in the wireless space. So. Um, if you have questions on this, th this is a lot of information. Let me know. Happy to uh, to, to provide more info info here as we uh, after the presentation. So, as we're as I mentioned earlier, uh, we actually have the ability to do lossless uh, handoffs from uh, mobile device to access point. Um, so, if you compare us to um, 802.11 and Cisco's uh, fast mobility. Um, we still are uh, light years ahead of, uh, uh, of their capabilities when uh, connecting from mobile device to uh, a, uh, uh, an access point and actually uh, can do it at, at a much, much greater distance than typical Wi-Fi. So the, the typical product that we talk about in this, uh, in this uh, uh, arena from, from mobility is the FM4500, which um, tends to be the, uh, the, the, the best product in our product mix um, because it's got uh, antenna connectors and power connectors that are uh, hardened for uh, high vibration environments, uh, typically transportation. Um, it uh, functions in the 4.9 to 5.9 gigahertz spectrum. Um, and these can be, you can set the radio to a specific channel uh, on a specific frequency and make sure that, uh, that, that you're uh, communicating in a, in a free space. Um, it's all based around that Prodigy MPLS technology, uses the two by two MIMO uh, antenna uh, type, 
Um, it can actually modulate up to 256 qualm. Um, throughput on the Ethernet interface is 500 megabits per second uh, and very, very low latency uh, per hop or per connection to, uh, to an access point as it's moving from point to point. Uh, supports VLANs and also has AES 128-bit uh, AES encryption. And again, uh, it's designed for those high vibration environments that you might find in a transportation uh, application, maybe in an AGV or a, uh, an overhead crane. Um, and so it's got uh, the M12 connectors on the bottom. There's also a fiber optic version of this available as well. Um, and it works very, very well in, uh, in a lot of these applications. Uh, <clears throat> the cool part uh, is that you can use the same radio on the track side as you can on the mobile uh, part of the application. So um, as you set up your uh, access points in the field, we try to make sure that uh, the, uh, the coverage areas overlap so that <clears throat> as the devices or the AGVs or the vehicles are moving from uh, through, the, through their path, they encounter um, a different um, signal strength and they don't have a lapse in coverage. So uh, as these devices are, Going from, if, for instance, if this, this AGV is going from uh, this access point to the next, it'll see a difference in signal strength as it moves, and that's how it determines where and when to make that, uh, to make that decision on uh, hopping from one access point to another. And again, the, the same radio is used in the mobile device as uh, on the track side, so it, it it reduces the amount of investment that a customer has to have in, uh, in the technology. And uh, you just have to load the right software uh, licenses uh, and plugins on the radios to change them from a track side to a, uh, to a mobile uh, device. We also have the ability to um, provide at the end of a shift or um, as these devices go into a maintenance bay, for instance, the ability to uh, download a lot of different information in, in a, a large, uh, with a large number of bandwidth. So say you, you have video cameras that uh, have recorded things during the day and you need to offload that data. Uh, we have ways of doing some uh, bandwidth sharing um, of the access points in that particular area to allow the radios on the vehicles that need to send that type of data uh, priority to get that data offloaded and also update if they have any updates of firmware or if they have any updates of, uh, <clears throat> of their uh, information for the next shift, you can actually uh, uh, develop that and send that through this network as well. Uh, we also have the ability if uh, this device on, on in one particular case can't see the access point, we can do a vehicle to vehicle uh, connectivity to bounce uh, the signal back so that uh, they can actually get uh, get their information and connected uh, connect themselves back to the uh, the physical network itself. So if you compare our technology to Wi-Fi again, and you look at uh, throughput per client versus the number of clients per access point um, on Wi-Fi, there's a precipitous drop or an exponential drop in performance as you have um, more and more devices connected to an access point. Um, if you look at the fluid mesh technology, um, our uh, decline is much more linear. Uh, there is still a decline uh, in, in uh, uh, overhead and, and performance, but um, it's much more linear and much more, uh, much more measurable and predictable uh, versus uh, some of the other technology that you might deploy. So we also have a number of uh, centralized and, and network management tools that uh, we provide for, uh, for setup, monitoring, and uh, uh, connectivity uh, on the radios themselves. Um, there are web-based uh, GUIs on the radio, uh, something called FM Quadro, which gives you the ability to uh, take a look at uh, uh, the, the individual radios and what they're connected to. Um, there's a uh, command line interface that is very Cisco-like um, that uh, allows you to dive into a lot of the, uh, the, the parameters in the radio itself and, and tweak things that you wouldn't normally be able to do via the GUI. Um, there's fluid stats, which is a, a way of offloading information and doing a little more in-depth monitoring of the radio as it's uh, actually functioning in, the, in its uh, in, uh, application. <clears throat> and this, uh, this can actually run on the, uh, uh, one of the servers that we have. We actually have a product that uh, does bandwidth aggregation um, in it, basically, it's a, a, 
an embedded computer without a radio in it that runs the same firmware as the radios do. <clears throat> and it can run on that, uh, that part of the network. Uh, we also support uh, SNMP uh, and uh, custom MIBs as well um, for uh, network monitoring. Um, we also have a solution called Racer that is a centralized um, activation point uh, you know, on our website <clears throat> for activation of plugins and plugin management. Uh, you can also do that locally on the radio itself. Uh, once you get a uh, license uh, code from uh, the, the website itself. And then the newest product uh, that we have in our, uh, our, our mix is FM monitor, which is basically uh, a situational awareness platform for uh, your uh, fluid mesh uh, network. And I can show you a couple of slides on these, uh, some of these tools as well. Um, so, for instance, these are some of the tools that are available on the radios uh, themselves. Uh, you've got the FM Quadro that I mentioned earlier, which allows you to uh, take a look at uh, the, the radios, signal strength, uh, what, they're, connect, what the, the, they're connected to and access points and other devices that they see, um, you know, throughput, uh, what licenses are on the radio. Uh, <clears throat> you also have the ability in some of the products to actually have a spectrum analyzer on site um, in, in, uh, in the radio to actually look at where there might be possible interference. And then there are some network analytics tools in FM Quadro that also allow you to take a look at things like link, it, uh, link error rate, packet error rate, throughput uh, over time, things like that. So uh, a very, very uh, intuitive interface to allow you to uh, take a look at what's going on on the radio. And then this is the new FM monitor uh, dashboard uh, that basically is a, uh, uh, a, a situational awareness platform of the fluid mesh network. Um, this green box on the top left corner uh, would actually uh, turn yellow or red based on, on some criteria that you set that would automatically show you that there's an issue that you need to either address or that has gone over a threshold that has been set. Um, you could take a look at the number of Ethernet devices that are connected to a radio. You can take a look at uh, packet error rate, link error rate, throughput, uh, jitter, other, type, other things on the, the physical network itself. Uh, you can group devices together based on where they're installed and where they're applied. Um, so there, it's, it's very, very intuitive, very, very useful uh, for monitoring your network. Um, <clears throat> today it runs uh, uh, on-premise on a Docker, basically in a, in a server. So you'd set up a virtual machine um, on site and it would be hosted there. Uh, we found when we interviewed a lot of customers about this technology uh, and this product that uh, they didn't want to have their data go to the cloud. Uh, they would rather keep it on-premise. So we started there. Uh, we'll also develop and, and introduce a cloud-based version of this as well. But uh, right now it's, uh, it's available as an on-premise solution. We also have uh, uh, the fluid stats uh, package I mentioned earlier. Uh, we also have a number of uh, graphic uh, representations of things that are going on in the radio that we could also uh, provide if FM monitor is not something that, uh, uh, that you have or have invested in. So uh, you could take a look at things like uh, throughput. Uh, you could take a look at uh, where your handoffs are actually happening in the system from mobile device to, uh, to, uh, to, to the wayside. Um, you can also look at um, your signal strength versus, uh, um, you know, RS, uh, your, your throughput. So there's a number of things that you can do uh, given this, uh, this technology as well. So uh, to kind of wrap things up and give you a, a, an overview of, uh, of, of what we're, why we're different and what the advantages are versus other technologies that you might have seen. Uh, this was really designed and developed as an OT technology. So it's, it's not Wi-Fi, it's not for IT, it's really hardened for industrial use, for mission critical applications. Um, it uses MPLS, so it's very, very different from traditional Wi-Fi technology. Uh, it's designed from its start for uh, fast and seamless roaming applications. Um, and it also uh, enables you to do high-speed connectivity if, if that's something that, uh, uh, that is of interest. Um, it's uh, high throughput, uh, and a lot of that is due to uh, the 2x2 uh, two two MIMO uh, antenna uh, and radio technology that we use. Um, very, very low latency, single digits uh, in, in most cases. Um, it's cyber secure. Uh, as a, 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 by design, MPLS is fairly invisible to other technologies, but you can encrypt the traffic and there's radius authentication available so that you can certify and, and make sure that this is supposed to be part of the physical network. Um, and again, ease of deployment, 
small form factor. Uh, these radios are fairly small in size, um, low power consumption, um, set up and, and maintained for uh, rugged applications. And we also have those <clears throat> centralized management and monitoring tools like Racer and FM Monitor that I mentioned earlier that make it easy to uh, take a look at everything in one place and monitor it and, and set up everything from, uh, from a, uh, a cloud-based solution if you, if you so choose. And uh, with that, uh, I ended up a little bit earlier than I expected, but uh, I can uh, certainly open it up for questions if, uh, if there are any. So John, I am looking for some right now. Um, looks like we don't have any yet, but we can definitely take some time to field some if we have any questions come in. Sure, one question I typically get is, you know, is this a, uh, something I have to apply for an FCC license to use? And, and, and the, it is not, it's a, a license-free technology. It's, uh, <clears throat> it, it uses the, the publicly available spectrum. Although if you do go to 4.9 in the US, 4.9 is, uh, is a public safety band. So you have to uh, apply for uh, an FCC uh, license for that. But uh, typically uh, we, we've not had, uh, ha had too many instances of that, but um, yeah, it, it is a license-free technology. All right, so we'll just give it a, give it a minute here and see if we get any questions. Um, if not, we'll probably give them some time back today. Sounds good. All right, so we have one. Please explain how the network is powered, P-O-E. Uh, yeah, so there is, uh, there is either, uh, you can either use power over ethernet or you can, you can use uh, direct DC in to, uh, to the units themselves. Um, and it's uh, the, depending on which radio you have, some are 24 volts uh, and some are 48 volts because uh, in many cases, these are designed for uh, use on onboard trains. So uh, they have to function in a, a little bit higher voltage range, but uh, we could provide you with some uh, PoE injectors that, uh, and some, some other uh, products that will uh, give you the right voltage range for the application. All right, thank you, John. So if that's it, if we have any more questions, I would definitely get those out, but it looks like that's gonna be it. So on behalf of CSIA, I would like to thank John for this informative discussion. And I'd like to thank all those attending. Um, we do have our online events calendar for any upcoming webinars. And we do also have our webinar archive page where we have all the recordings. So please jump in there and see any webinars you may have missed. This one will be up there probably tomorrow afternoon. And again, I would like to thank John for this informative discussion and all those attending on behalf of CSIA. All right, thank you, John. Thanks, Colin. Thanks, everybody.